Hey guys, how you doing? Jane Null Zero here. I hope all is well in YouTube land. <laughs> Whatever part of the world that you are in. In my part of the world, we went fishing and we caught some Ohio River Sauger. And we are going to, by request, show, uh, show y'all, whoever's watching, <laughs> how I clean and how we cook them and my favorite way to cook them. So... Let me get all my stuff together here and get the fish that I caught this morning uh, together and we'll clean one of them and then we'll cook them. So if you want to see me catch them, you got to go to the regular dude fishing channel to watch me catch them. So we'll see you guys in a bit. Okay guys, we're back home. We've got, uh, we caught a few saugers that we're going to clean them up now. Uh, a couple of things first. I am not an expert at filleting. I'm not a fishmonger. I'm not even any good at it. So don't give me a bunch of crap about how I'm doing it because this is just how I am filleting my sauger <laughs> that I'm going to cook for my family. There's still going to be dudes giving me crap. I already know it. Anyway, the fish is dead. So for all those who are going to give me crap about the fish is alive, the fish is dead. It's deader than 4 o'clock. So we have dead fish. Yeah, you're going to see the fin move. It's reflexed. The fish is dead. He's been out of the water for... I don't know, about 11 o'clock this morning. And it's about 5 o'clock in the evening. So, all right. So what I do, with these sauger, you can see how they're kind of like a, uh, like a cigar shape. They're pretty round. And they've got some nice big fillets on them. But I fillet them the same way that I do uh, any other fish. I just come in here behind these two sets of uh, pectoral fins here. Cut right down to the backbone. Right behind the gill plate to the backbone. Turn my knife sideways and follow the spine all the way to just this side of the tail. That way I can flip it over. Start my flay knife right here, bend my blade, run it right along between the meat and the skin, which gives me the fillet with the rib cage in. Cut off that piece of skin. Now I'll take and I'll follow my knife at an angle. Well, I want to try to follow the, uh, the ribs at the same angle as the bones are going with my knife. Just go right along those ribs all the way to the end of the rib cage. They, uh, they have a long rib cage on them. Follow that around and get as much of that as I can. Just like that to where we have just the ribs left. And here's uh, our one filet. They're not giant fish, but they are very very tasty put that in my bowl and I'll do the same thing on this side follow the spine cut off my meat from the skin now this one here I got a little bit of a, a little bit of that fin on here I'll trim that off but there's not a lot of meat left on there. You can see through it. I see you. And these carcasses also, on the larger sauger and uh, some of the larger walleye, up here behind the eyeball, there'll be a little pocket of cheek meat. Uh, it's worth getting on the larger fish. These smaller ones, it's usually not. You're not going to get enough out of there to mess with it. So now you can see the ladies up there already waiting. Our carcasses go up there for the ladies to enjoy and for our hog pork chop to enjoy. Trimming the rib cage out of this one. Just like that. You can see where there's a little bit of fin, that little bit of fin bone was. I'm going to get that out of there. It's cold. My hands don't want to work properly. Just like that. And another filet in the bowl. All of this stuff here is going to get fed. All of the leftovers is going to get fed to our chickens. Uh, and our hog. They love it. These sections of skin, um, if, if the hog doesn't eat them, whatever, tomorrow morning, whatever is left of the chickens and the pig don't want to eat, uh, we can we can pick them up and bury them in the garden. This stuff works really good in compost and in garden. Uh, if you're worried about a smell, then just bury it in your garden, which is what we're going to do. So, I've got a couple more of these to do. We'll get them all filleted up. But you can see it's a really nice, a nice white meat. We'll get them, uh, the rest of them cleaned out, and then we'll go in and start cooking them. Oh, yeah. 
Okay guys, we're in the kitchen now. Uh, we are going to start cooking. We have our sauger fillets. Uh, we're just going to put them. This is just, uh, it's called cornmeal mix. Uh, it's just a mixture of corn flour and corn meal. You can buy it in a bag at any of your big box grocery stores. And we added some seasonings to it. We added a little bit of salt and pepper and garlic and onion and however it is that you want to flavor it up. But we don't dip it in any egg wash or any of that kind of stuff. We just take it straight from the bowl, the straight, the, the damp fillet from where you rinsed it off because you want to bring them in and rinse them off. And then we give it a good coating with this cornmeal mix, like such. And then we take them over here and drop them into the fry oil, one piece at a time, slowly so that you don't burn yourself. This is a, I don't know if it's called a Dutch oven or a camp oven or what it's called, but it's what we use for deep frying. We'll put a few of them in there. We'll take our handy dandy Regular dude, kitchen towel, wipe off the mess because we always make a mess in the kitchen. And uh, a lot of folks have asked me, am I sure that it's safe to eat fish from the Ohio River? We eat fish out of the Ohio River, you know, a couple of times a month. And I personally have never had any kind of issues, issues, issues with eating fish from the river. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, they're safe to eat. Uh, you can eat them. Uh, you know, four or five times a month, once a week, and you'll be just fine. And uh, not to mention that they're delicious. So we're going to fry these now for a couple of minutes. They're, 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 they're thin, small fillets. They don't take very long to cook. Just a couple of minutes in the fry oil, and they will be done. The oil that we are using is lard. We fry everything in lard because I find that a lot of the uh, processed vegetable oils and stuff, uh, they just don't agree with me, and uh, I don't like the way they taste. So we're using lard, so don't give me a bunch of crap about it. <laughs> anyway, a couple of minutes, these will be done. We'll give it the old poison test, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, here we go with the taste test. You can see how nice and white and flaky the meat comes out to be. It is really, really good. Uh, it is not a really strong fishy taste. It's really mild and sweet, and I love it. But we're going to make sure it's not poison. Hot. Mmm. <laughs> Totally worth standing on the riverbank all morning long. So there you have it. Ohio River Sauger. This is uh, how we catch them and how we cook them. Very, very delicious. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, if you're interested in an apron or a regular dude fishing hoodie or hats and all the kind of good stuff, swing by our website and check them out. That's uh, RankinsCreekRabbitry.com. We'll leave a link in the description box. You guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of the day. God bless. Yeah. Buzz, buzz. The end.